Hello and welcome. I'm Masood Raja, and this is my second conversation on narratology or theory of narrative. Now, in my previous conversation with you, we had gone over the definition of narratology itself, and I'll put it up here, which is narratology is etymologically the science of narrative, and it was originally defined and used by the structuralist, and I explained it a little bit. And then we also went over a basic definition of narrative, which is, and you can see it on the screen, a narrative is the semiotic representation of a series of events meaningfully connected in a temporal and causal way. And I briefly explained that in the previous uh, uh, lecture and conversation about it. So today we will progress from there. We have already learned about the basic definition of narrative, what narratology is. We did a little bit about the mediated and unmediated enunciation. I'll talk a little more about it. But since it is, remember, a theory or practice developed by the structuralists, right? Most of the time our emphasis will be on the structure of a narrative. So keeping in mind this definition of narrative, right, there is a causal connection, right, between meaningfully connected and there is a temporality, right, in a plot with a narrator, okay. So we'll go a little more into the details of narrative and its definition itself and how the editors of the book that I'm using, the link is in the descriptions, they further develop from this basic definition of narratology and narrative, the various techniques that emerge in the field of narratology or the field of narrative theory. So let's watch a brief, uh, you know, a videographic movie on it that I've prepared for you, and then I'll come back and talk a little more about it. So we will build on what we discussed earlier, and especially I want to elaborate the mediated and unmediated enunciations. Now, drama traditionally is considered unmediated because it's immediate and there is no uh, narrator in it. Whereas storytelling, linguistic narratives, the novel, short story are mediated because there is a narrator in it. And then other forms of mediacy can be filmed because there are camera angles, there is director's choices. And then each narrative media which has a narrator in it will require a specific approach. The novelistic tradition requires its own specific narrative analysis and especially that's the one most highly developed in literary studies where narratology is used because novel is the most complex genre and it has certain inherent qualities. First of all, as you will see, the novel is inherently reflexive. What that means is that while the narration is being done, the narrator can also think about its the past, the present, right? About things around the characters. It can have different experimental variations, you know, third person narrator, second person narrator, and then it can have a mix of reflection and narrative. While we, the narrator tells the story, the narrator can also give us his or her thoughts about the environment, about the present, about the past. And so when we come to drama and film, the drama is simply verbal text which is written and it is performed and each performance can be different. In film, once it is filmed, the presentation becomes fixed and almost becomes a fixed text that can be studied. That means that the images of the film can be used to narrate and thus studied, right? And uh, hence it becomes part of narratological studies. So that kind of proves that narratology doesn't just read written text. It's not just a part of literary theory, but a part of a general semiotic theory, right? And semiotics simply stated is the study of signs and symbols and their interpretation. So as you can see, uh, we are still expanding what we kind of discussed in the first conversation about narratology, right? And we are still dealing with 
the narrow definition of a narrative and a broader definition of a narrative. So the difference was that a broader definition of narrative, you know, is any narrative that has a plot. The narrower definition, which is more pertinent to literary study, is anything that has a plot with a narrator. That's crucial. Now, that's why we then go into mediated and unmediated enunciations, right? Unmediated enunciations would be where there is no narrator, but there is a plot. Drama, for example, has a plot. And then mediated enunciation is short stories, jokes, right? memoirs, novels, because there is a narrator who narrates the story. So that structure is what we study. Now, drama also sometimes becomes narration in the narrow sense, you know, when there is a chorus who points to what is happening in the story, or if there is a prologue who points to what is to come. So that then gives us a perspective, and hence we can study it as a narrow text. But the difference between drama, film, and the novel novelistic tradition primarily is, as I pointed out earlier, is that when drama is performed, even though it has a verbal text, it has a written text, but that performance is occasional, right? It can change in the next performance depending on who's the director, right? So it cannot really be read as a stable text because there is an immediacy on it. We're talking about stage play, right? But when it's filmed, then it becomes fixed. The medium becomes fixed. And then we have a fixed narrative, right, with a perspective. What is that perspective? Where does narration enter it? Through the lens, through the camera angles, through the choices that a director makes. All of those then make that into a text in a narrow sense, with a narrator, with a perspective, right? Hence. What the editors of this book claim is that that's why narratology isn't just literary studies. It's a study of semiotics, right? It's a general semiotic study of signs and symbols and how they work within a given narrative. That's why narratology can study film, it can study jokes, it can study, you know, uh, now things on social media because it studies signs and how they work within a narrative. Right Now, where we are headed after this discussion is, is the novel, right? Because that is the queen genre of literary studies. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, the novel is expensive and the most complex genre for so many reasons. But for study within narratology, the novel offers, offers different challenges, okay? So there is obviously a narrator in a novel and we can expect what a novel would contain, right? And usually a novel would contain a plot. And that plot contains what happens to different characters or what do they do, but then there is also a narrator, right? So in narrative study of a novel, we have to first figure out whether we can rely on the narrator or not. How does the narrator set up the temporality of the novel? How is each part of the novel connected with the other? What is the causal link, right? And the novels are inherently reflexive because while you're studying a plot narrative, you can be taken to the past. You are in a character's mind. You are getting an opinion about the novel itself, if it is a postmodern novel, right? Or the narrator can point you to some information beyond the plot. All of those bear upon the textual study, narrative study of a novel, right? Now, that's why novel in pretty much all theory traditions is the hardest genre to read and critically write about. Now, as we move forward, what we will then learn is, remember, Narratology is originally driven by structuralism. And structuralism is what? Study of signs within a given structure. So most of what we get a, will get is, especially in the study of the novel, right, is people will try to define the structure. How is a narrative built, right? So the first thing we will learn then in narratology is the basic structure of the narrative. 
right? When we learn that, then we will learn, we will read it along the linear plane of a semiotic chain, right? A, B, C, D, right? Through differences. So there is one way of reading it syntagmatically, which I'll explain in the next video, right? And then there is a way of reading it vertically, which is the paradigmatic axis of a semio semio semiotic chain, right? And both those axes then will give us a structure, right? The purpose in narratology is to plot the structure of a narrative and then study it. That's why you will see many diagrams and, you know, specialized vocabularies. Now, I'm not doing this because I think narratology is the best way of reading literature, but this is semiotics and, you know, uh, narratology is an important way of studying and analyzing and interpreting literature. And sadly, it hasn't had that kind of a prominence in academia recently. It is becoming more prominent now. I have never really taught it in my literary theory classes, and so now I feel bad. So hence, as I learn more, right, as I mentioned that I am learning along with you, and as I explain it to you and get feedback from you, maybe we will then have another set of tools to study not just literary texts, but texts in general, narrative texts, narrative poems, and be equipped with you know, better tools to look at text in a more complex way. So that's all for today, right? I hope it is useful. And in the next conversation, we will move into the structure of narrative as defined or theorized by different theorists. That's my plan. So as always, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, do you think that you're understanding the basic concepts? If not, let me know why. What can I do better? And then I'll come back with some more. Thank you so much, and as always, peace and love.